Awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're really excited to have you all here today. Um, we are going to learn from um, our great partner, Griffin Spaulding. Um, this is the second partner spotlight in a series of partner spotlights. Um, Griffin Spaulding has been a really great partner to kick up and they're doing some amazing things in their district and we thought that they would be a really great example for you all to learn from. Um, so we're going to talk about how they align their PL to district priorities and then also how Kickup has saved them a lot of time um, and really democratized their access um, across the district and across all different levels to learning and empowering teachers to actually take charge of their learning. Um, so just a quick agenda, we're going to do some quick introductions because there is another person here with me um, who is going to really talk about uh, Griffin Spaulding and give us a um, insider's view of their process. Um, we're going to go over who is Griffin Spaulding, what are their problems and how um, have they been solved with the use of kickup. Um, and then we are going to do um, some Q&A. We're going to get an opportunity to get into the platform and see some of these things happening live. Um, and then we will close out and do next steps and all those good things. Um, so first, just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Mackenzie, and I am a client success manager here at Kickup. Um, I've worked really closely with Griffin Spaulding over this past year to get them up and running with their PL. Um, and I am really happy to introduce Melvina Crawl. Melvina, if you want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Melvina Crawl, um, previously Director of Professional Learning Griffin Spaulding County Schools, and I'm glad to be here today to share our story. Awesome. And Melvina is just awesome. She um, really led the way for Griffin Spalding and their PL and um, has just been a really great partner over the past year. So it's really exciting to have you here and have, you know, everyone hear about your journey. Okay, so just a little bit about Griffin Spalding. Uh, Melvina, if you want to take this away, just give us a okay. high level overview. Okay, so we are uh, basically a mid-sized uh, mid district in Georgia. We have about 10,000 students, 18 schools. We have a college and career academy as well. And we have about 700 teachers and 1,500 employees. And all of our employees actually have access to the platform. Awesome, yes, that is very and, true. Yeah, and we're located about 30 minutes south of Atlanta. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, and that's true. I know that Melvina has, um, you know, her transportation staff and everyone is using KickUp and using the reports. It's really cool and really exciting. Um, awesome. So um, under that same vein, can you tell us a little bit about what life was like before you all got KickUp? Yes. Yeah, so um, prior to KickUp, we, we um, utilized uh, a pre another um, smaller platform um, and we had to do a lot of manual manipulation. So that's one of the things that KickUp has allowed us to do. Uh, staff are very appreciative of having a very user-friendly platform um, that facilitators love it. They have access to go in, do a lot of their things on their own without relying on someone else to kind of go in and fix things, submit classes and things of that nature. Um, staff, so far I've gotten positive feedback. Staff really love this platform. It's very user-friendly, easy to use, uh, use it on the go. Um, and it's uh, web-based, no downtime, no having to rely on a server. So it's really saved us a lot of time in, the, in those regards. It's very user-friendly. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for that uh, snapshot of life before kickup. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get into this a little bit, but we just wanted to show this um, illustration of kind of Griffin Spaulding's process with PL. Um, mm -hmm. So do you want to talk a little bit about this process of sort of a continuous improvement and feedback cycle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we love the KickUp um, product that we purchased, with, which is the professional learning um, module. Um, we're also getting the foundations module. We're adding that as well. Um, and part of the uh, reason why we wanted to do it is because everything is housed in the platform. Previously, we were doing uh, our educator needs assessment separately. Uh, and it was just very cumbersome waiting to gather the data, collect the data, and have to uh, analyze it uh, in a different way. Whereas this year, we launched this as our first year launching KickUp, and we had our needs assessment put inside the platform. So it made all of the data uh, 
accessible with the fingertips, you know, quickly click, click on it live, real time as people filled it out. And we're able to disaggregate that data in multiple ways uh, to determine the needs of our classified and certified um, personnel. So after we conduct the needs assessment, we have these data reviews. So I lead the data reviews at the district level with all of the departments and they, they were able to go in and just click on their reports, which is something different for us. Normally I would have to download a report and send it out to everybody. I didn't have to do that this year. Everybody has access to their report through the pickup platform, which is very user-friendly and makes it uh, saves a lot of time on that. And so we, we look at the data in the meetings along with other pieces of data that each department has so that we can determine what type of professional learning needs that we have. So some of the other data that we look at in addition to the kick up data is, is our student achievement data, for example. That would be some of the other data that we would use. And then uh, as far as uh, creating the professional learning, we look at our district goals and we just rewrote a new five-year strategic plan. And so we are aligning our professional learning needs that came through with the data and what staff uh, needs are that's coming through with the data, as well as those district initiatives. And so we kind of align those and departments create the professional learning that centers around that. And this could be internal as well as external professional learning. And then we deliver the professional learning. So this year we were able to have staff to utilize the platform, facilitators build to create the courses or course creators who, who are those people that are identified by your district, they go in, they build the courses, we publish the courses, staff register, they attend the courses, and then they provide their feedback. And so we have the two types. Well, for us, we're gauging the effectiveness of the professional learning perception data of that, as well as we ask kick up to add a section where staff could identify some strategic areas that they want additional supports. And that's been very helpful. For example, if they attended a session and they really needed a follow-up, like a one-to-one, they could get, they could request follow-up coaching. They could request some additional pieces that we could uh, respond to their needs immediately uh, and then do those other things that we normally would do, which brings us to this last part is the monitor of the implementation, whether it's classroom walkthroughs or through our data uh, PLC meetings as well. We monitor through that as well, where people get to share out and work on those practices. So kickup has been really, really great because before, it was really, it's, it's making me tired just to even think about what it was before, <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was really a drawn out process, whereas Kickup has allowed us to be able to streamline our processes and practices and have data in real time. I mean, it's nothing like being able to just come together, look at the data, everybody can click on it and see it and just in multiple facets so that you can know what you need to work on. And so staff being able to request additional support has really um, been very helpful. And we use a platform called uh, PD Express prior to uh, Kiko. So that's pretty much a very quick overview of the story. Um, we looked at this system along with other platforms for a couple of years and then the kind of pandemic, you know, it kind of slowed down a little bit of the purchase process, but I'm so very glad we were able to launch it this year and get it up and going. And I've just got nothing but positive feedback from staff members, administrators. Uh, our principals also have access. So we have it set up where all the school principals uh, are able to see their schools and they put their professional learning in. Uh, and with the new foundations module that we're bringing on board, it's gonna strengthen these last two pieces that you see in the cycle here where it's delivered the feedback and the monitoring classroom implementation, that coaching piece also at the district level coordinators that go out and provide support to coaches, school teams, the, all that's gonna be able to be in this platform and really help us to streamline our processes. So we're really looking forward to that. And it also helps you to tie the, all that data together. So it's, it's been wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Malvina, for really like giving us a really holistic view of how you all um, you know, use data in your district. Um, and we're going to get into the platform in a second so we can really show what that looks like in action. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to quickly just highlight some of those pieces that you were talking about. 
So currently, um, when Griffin Spalding started with us, they were using our learning module. Um, I know I have a couple of clients that are on this call right now, and we're getting started with that. And so that's really that event management part of our platform. Um, you know, some of the things that Melvina was talking about was access to uh, PD feedback reports, where you can really look at you know, the feedback that your teachers are giving and really promote that uh, teacher voice um, and really review it with your facilitators and have that culture of feedback um, in your district. Um, Griffin Spalding recently expanded to foundations to allow for those um, walks and observations as well as coaching data. Um, currently, they're working to align their um, professional learning and their walkthroughs and their coaching so that they can really tell um, a holistic story about support that is happening in the district. And then the last piece um, that we have as a part of our system um, is our growth module, and that is really that formal evaluations. Um, so just like another piece of the puzzle, um, I really like to think about it as like the infinity gauntlet. Once you have all the rings, you're good to rock and roll. Um, and so as Melvina mentioned, these all come with me or another client success manager, as yes. well as those real-time data analytics and reports um, that you can share with um, as many people or as little people as you would like. All right, <laughs> let's get into the system. Let's talk, uh, show these things in action. Um, so first and foremost, I wanted to come into KickUp and show those tags that you were talking um, about for your PD. So can you tell us a little bit about yes. you know, these tags and you know, what your thinking was as you were creating these and how they've kind of helped you with aligning your PD? Yeah, so this is a feature that I really love about KickUp and it's customizable. So we have this customized to our district. So we have tags that allow the creator of the course to identify the content areas, the department, the employee types. And the beautiful part about the department is when the department is tagged, the division director, uh, the executive director over that area, they're able to see their data as long as the department is tagged. So one of the things we do on the backside before publishing is if someone skips that, we make sure that it's there. But pretty much everybody does it. We really do have to do very few edits to a submitted course. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the focus areas, which are tied to initiatives, grade levels, and strategic plan goals. So these are the current goals and they have been revised. So we do have five, so that's gonna be updated, but this is what we have now. So if I wanted to run a report by a strategic goal area to see what have we done to support family and community engagement, we can do that and we can look at data, we can look at feedback, we can look at supports. So I really love the tags, they're customizable and it's very important to, to us to have those tags that we need so we can look at the data uh, by, by specific areas, by departments, and also focus areas or content areas. We also have the uh, LEAKS standards. In Georgia, we have LEAKS and TEAKS. And then we have the professional learning standard. And in our state, we're required to use those for the PLC as well as part of our district. And so we have the professional learning standards created by the National Organization Learning Forward. And so we, we are able to tag our PL for that as well. And then schools, um, creators, um, for events can create events for their schools and schools can can use this platform and look at their data cool. awesome. for the sessions that they have available so these yeah these are our tags and it makes it easy when you get ready to disaggregate your data if you have the tags set up the way that you need to for your um for your district or school yeah and these um where are they? These uh, strategic goals here, you also did your needs assessment aligned to these areas as well. Correct. Right? So we, we set up our needs assessment items based on the strategic goal areas, which kind of makes it easy for um, departments and the um, district planning team, uh, district improvement team, team to look at the data and feedback from the needs assessment by the goal areas. Great. Okay. So we're going to actually get into some of your reports and show some of your data because um, we really want to illustrate, you know, all of those great things that you're talking about. Um, so excuse me while I do some kick up magic here. Um, all right, it's going to load in one second. Um, so this is Griffin Spalding's professional development um, and feedback 
data from last year. As you can see, they've got a lot of data. They have a very healthy culture of feedback, in my opinion. Um, and um, you can see that we have this broken down by, um, you know, these three different areas. Um, so just kind of taking us into um, our overall PL experience. Um, Melvina, did you want to so talk? Yeah. This first part was unique to something we wanted to gauge perception of as far as the quality of the professional learning. Because as you know, if you don't experience a quality experience, you know, it's not likely to be transferred. And initially, you know, uh, when we started doing this uh, five years ago, looking at this particular area, it was down like in the 60s. And so, so far, we've been able to maintain district 90% uh, or higher by looking at that to make sure that we're offering high quality product, people looking at the feedback and make sure that we are meeting the needs of the staff, certified and classified, um, and use that feedback to make those changes so that the PL is relevant to their role, their experience. And I love being able to just go on in here and just see what it is, you know, at any given time. Awesome. I think that in this heat map area, um, this is really where the tags sort of shine through. Yeah. Um, so is there a specific tag that I should look under? So I would say you could group it by um, ELA maybe. Okay. Is this where you want to? Yeah, so content, content area. area. ELA? Because they have a lot of feedback in here, yeah. Great, perfect. And then change the group by, let's change it to, uh, Content area. Content area, okay. Yeah. Cool. So you could just see, uh, do you wanna show them you can change it to percent? You see a, a scale, the 4.0 scale, that's what you're looking at now. And if you look at, you can change it to percent as well. And then if you go down, you can see support needs. And so facilitators have this for their individual sessions. This is a district view, but if you click on, it's going to tell you um, who needs support and the type of support that they need. Awesome. Um, do you, I think one of the things that I really appreciate about this is that you also have these PL standards here. So even with yes. the ELA, you can see how, yes. you know, it's aligned across those different PL standards, which then, you know, yes. connect to mm -hmm. your E and then are also going to connect to those walks and the, that coaching, um, once we get that up and running for all of you. So I think that's yes. really cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and we it, did do the pilot of that as well. So when she's referencing that, we did do a pilot so we could see what it looks like as well. Yeah. And again, this is all coming from the ways in which you're tagging your PL. So mm -hmm. awesome. Cool. Um, and then I guess the last piece is, you know, when you're talking about those attendees requesting additional support, um, you added this section or you asked us to add the section in there so that you could really, you know, use that. Yes. And I know that in the future, you'll be using mm -hmm. the um, coaching and walkthroughs to sort of follow up and make sure that mm -hmm. the people on this list are getting that support. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Um, so then the last piece um, that we talked about was your um, needs assessment. Do we wanna go ahead and show sure. everyone that? <laughs> awesome. Um, so there, here are the different, uh, those, what are they, the strategic priorities? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. These yeah. are the goal areas of our district for our strategic plan. Cool. So the strategic priorities are developed out of this, but these are the broad four goal areas that we have in our district. Cool. So this is the first year that we set up our um, PL needs assessment in this format. So it really makes it easy for us to um, look at the, um, look at the um, data by goal area. So as you can see, you can see what kind of the, the top areas just kind of stand out. You can see all of the areas, uh, but challenging behavior is one that when you look at this particular one under student achievement that's standing out. And so, you know, you have 370 responses indicating uh, that's an area, that's 43% of the respondents for that area in instructional support. So that's something that our district is going to be looking at. How are we supporting challenging behaviors, teachers with challenging behaviors in the classroom? Awesome. Um, 
Cool. So I think that we have a few minutes left. Um, I definitely want to leave some room for Q&A. Was there anything that you wanted me to click on that I did not click on before we hop back into the presentation? And I don't know if we mentioned, but this is customizable. So this is the this is the needs assessment that we asked them to create for us for our district. Yeah. Cool. I think you clicked on everything. Um, that I have them. Is there something in the chat box? Unless you uh, want to show them the walks that we did in the pilot. Okay. Yeah, we can show them the walks in the pilot. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So the last one, I know that you talked. Oh, we about still have a good amount of time too, as well. That was oh. a reminder that we have. My bad. I thought that we were sucking up the time. Okay, great. So let's get into that walkthrough that you talked about. Um, I know that you had the Orton Gillingham walkthrough. Did you want to talk about? that in the PL that you all did in your district? Um, well, we can you can click on it. I'm not sure what's there. You can click on it. Sure thing. We might want to do the pilot one. <clears throat> sure, we can do this one. Um, yeah. So um, one of the things that we, we have, OG Orton Gillingham is one of our processes for ELA for elementary. And also, we wanted to look at um, our walkthrough tool for just general instruction. And so we did a pilot for the foundations module. And this piece right here is something that we really, really are very interested in examining um, the growth of the teachers and from the PD that was provided and the growth over time. So how did it start out um, like in quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three? And I think this is kind of uh, showing a picture of it. Um, and really asking, really drilling down to see, are we making connections with the PD and the practices that are happening in the classroom? So that's what the foundations module is going to allow us to do to be able to drill into the data a little bit more and look at, look at that and what we're doing to support teachers and staff in the, at the building level. Awesome. Great, and I know that we're working on this now, but we're getting your PD all teed up and tagged, and we're yes. also working on having an aligned section in your walkthroughs and yes. in your coaching. Um, and so this was just a pilot that we did with them to make mm -hmm. sure that they were all happy with, um, you know, yes. the functionality of foundations. Um, we are also able to, you know, hone this in by different content areas. Um, as well as, you know, uh, looking at it against the types of teachers, the levels of experience and things like that to really see, you know, how they're shining in those different areas. And then um, there's also the PD feedback again that lives here. Um, and so they were able to really look at, you know, the story that's told between those, uh, the instructional walkthrough tool and the near PD feedback. And I will say that we pulled a couple of these, um, like under the learning experience, the first one, I experienced purposeful, purposeful activities that allowed me to actively engage with concepts. That is helping you as a facilitator to know, are you engaging the engagement levels that really can change practice? So it's good to look at that because if it's red, that's a, that will let me know that that's an area that we really, really need to work on um in the district so you have those indicators on the left side and then you have the data points on the right side and we're looking at it by pl standards but if you look at the group by you can easily change it to something else uh content area subject uh grade level department school so you can look at it in multiple ways could you just click inside one of those boxes to click inside three point yes show the scale Oops. Sorry. So really, really also when you click in the scale, you can see more about the responses to an item in the heat map. So if, if it's red, you can see how many people. So that kind of helps you gauge, do, is that really, really a problem area? Or was it that we just had a low response rate? So those are things that you can look at when you're trying to make decisions about the data. Definitely. Um, and it's what it's, it's things that we look at when we have our data talks. We're looking at that. I was just going to ask you about that yeah. <laughs> culture of feedback. Yeah. yeah. So the great thing about Griffin Spalding is that um, they always have people in here always constantly looking at the reports and really iterating on, mm -hmm. you know, the process. So I think that's really awesome. Great. 
Um, okay, so let's uh, pop into the chat and see, does anyone have any questions about what they've seen? Any questions from Albina in, um, about her implementation process? I'm gonna stop sharing so that we can see each other's faces. I think I answered the one question about the platform earlier. Any other questions? I'm trying to give like slow typers an opportunity to <laughs> get something in there. <laughs> they said we explained everything very well. Thanks so much for sharing. Yes. But that's good to know. Hiccup is very user friendly and it's easy to use, easy to navigate. And your client success manager, we have McKinsey. I hope that yours will be as great as ours, but um, is, is available to help you navigate through any of the problematic areas that you might come up with, which are very few. I appreciate that endorsement, Melvina. <laughs> Jessica is also another, yep. <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Great, all right. Well, if there aren't any questions, I know we are um, a little bit uh, early on time, but you know, we always like to give you all extra time back to your schedule. Um, so uh, last little pieces um, of this are, I'm gonna share my screen. All right. Um, so if any of this interested you, um, Malvina touched on um, our foundations module and coaching. Um, we are doing a coaching beta. So if you're a coach and you're interested in um, piloting our coaching module, um, please reach out. We are more than happy to show you what it's like and um, tell you a little bit about the module. Oh no, okay, sorry, wrong page. So sorry, everyone. Let's try that again. Are you seeing this lovely slide now? Yes, okay, thank you, Melvina. <laughs> so my bad, sorry, everyone. Um, so you have um, this lovely coaching beta. You're gonna go to kickup.co slash beta, um, and that will be an opportunity for you to um, uh, pilot coaching um, if you're interested. And then if there's anything that you saw today that your district may not have, or you're interested in using KickUp, you can always go to kickup.co slash demo and connect with one of our wonderful um, account managers. They would be more than happy to set up a demo with you and show you more functionality. Um, are there any other questions before I, I sign us off? 